Hello, and welcome to Point Counterpoint, a production of the Line newspaper and LTTV. Today we're talking about the issue of American exceptionalism. So America is the land of the free, but is it really as great as people would like to believe? So today we have Greg Smith, he's the managing editor at the Line newspaper, and Grace DeToker, the uh, editor-in-chief of the Line newspaper. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thanks, yeah, Marge. thanks for having us. So let's kind of start off with you, Greg. Can you kind of walk us through what your, what your position for uh, on American exceptionalism is? Yeah, sure. So I believe that American exceptionalism is the recognition that America is really just inherently different from every other nation. We stand apart culturally, politically, and economically, and philosophically from every other country, and t that's today and all throughout history. And America really has a unique role in the world today, and we're really the indispensable nation. What do you think, Grace? What is your position on this topic? I'm definitely grateful to live in America. I'm glad that I live in this country, but a big, I think calling America as exceptional is just a bit of a stretch. I think that there's a lot of social issues that we ha can address, a lot of political problems, systems within our government that maybe need a bit of correcting. So while well, I think America is good, I think that we're not great, and I don't want to settle for mediocrity in my nation. And so, Greg, in, in your argument, you focus a, a lot on uh, many of the freedoms in America. So, and, and how do you see those as playing a role in setting America apart in, uh, on the world stage? Yeah, so really before America, there wasn't a country that was founded on the idea that, so these ideas existed before America, but they hadn't been actually codified into any law. So America is based on the principle that there are certain rights that are given by God and not the government, and that people exist as free beings and not as servants of the government. So when you start with that, that really informs a lot of what our views and our policies are today and uh, for all of America's existence really were because people in America don't have to you know abide by all the silly rules that a lot of other people have to and some really downright oppressive things that really are just terrible uh, things for people to have to go through in other countries. And Grace, in your argument, you, you're not denying that there that the ideas that set America apart are exceptional. Like the things that were founded um, back when uh, in 1776. But you're you're kind of arguing more that these ideas are great. Let's try to take them to conclusion, right? Yeah, I'm, a big thing that I feel like about America is that we were definitely founded on very strong principles, a lot of freedoms like Greg had mentioned. Again, very grateful to have those freedoms. That's something very unique about our country. But I feel like a lot of times they're either not brought out, like you said, uh, to conclusion, or we're just not emphasizing them enough. Um, we, there are, in the law books, yes, like there are all these freedoms, but is that actually being played out? Is, or is, are there, is there actually equality in schools, in the workplace, in government, in other areas? And you have to look into women and minorities, minorities a bit as well and really think, are all these people still being treated as equitably as the law books say they should, as you know, is pay still equal? Not particularly in this instance, no. So. And, and so you would say that these ideas are so great, let's kind of actually give that equality and yes. that kind of things to those parties. Definitely. These, we were founded on such strong principles and such great ideas. I think we need to go back to what we were founded on, take a good hard look at what our founding fathers had initially wanted and kind of build up from there. And Greg, what is your, how, how do you kind of respond to yeah, that? How do you so, think your argument fits into what race is saying there? So I think that, sure, America is not perfect, but I don't think that's uh, ground, any ground to say that America is like the rest of the world. Uh, you mentioned equal pay, but uh, the thing about the wage gap is that those studies were all done just based on salaried earnings. Um, so women, it was just said that women earned less as salaried employees than men overall. It said nothing about equal work they did or time they worked or anything like that. And that all that says is it suggests that women took time off. Sure, pay might not be exactly equal, but you know, kind of like Last time when I was talking about, there's certain things that are just not the government's role to, you know, intervene and talk about saying that these things need to be equal. People can form their own, you know, companies or whatever they want. So that's really, um, I don't think it's first of all ground to say that, you know, the government has to do something about it, and also it's not ground to say that America is not exceptional. Uh, the biggest issue that obviously people will bring up is slavery, which was the institution of slavery in America was absolutely horrible, but America fought a war to abolish slavery and 
uh, more American lives are lost in the Civil War than any other American war. Um, so it's, it's a pretty big thing that America abolished slavery and that it was ultimately the Western ideas of freedom and equality that you know, triumphed. So. Yeah, definitely. I think that it was really great we abolished slavery. Slavery, I mean, no one's going to say slavery was a good part of our history. Nobody's going to say, I wish slavery would come back. That's a terrible thing to say. That's not anyone's point or opinion. But, of course, more American lives were lost, A, because it was only American soldiers fighting. It was a civil war just between divisions in our own nation, so there weren't any outside parties to come in and cause other casualties. And then another thing that you had mentioned, why did we have slavery in the first place? That's why did we ever think it was okay to own another person just based on like melanin in their skin? I mean, it's, I understand that like times were obviously very different in the 1700s and when America was founded, but still, we, there is just, the institution of slavery should never have been a part of America's history in the first place. And while it's fantastic we abolished it, there's still repercussions about race that, you know, there still is inequality for a lot of African American citizens, or so is the kind of political nature in the country right now. So, can, yeah, can I just to, go ahead? Go, yeah, so yeah. what you're really overlooking is that. Slavery is not unique to America at all. Sure, it's unique that America had race-based slavery, but literally every civilization owned slaves. And there's still illegal human trafficking in the world and stuff like that. So America was not unique in that it had slavery. Every civilization since ancient times had slavery. The, where uh, the slave traders captured slaves from in West Africa, those tribes enslaved each other and traded those slaves to the slave traders who happened to be white and brought them to America. So it really is not unique to America that slavery happened. It's the abolition of slavery. And that's something that's always overlooked. So, And yeah. so do you think personally, Grace, that like the way you see America and it's the way legislation works here as having uh, kind of a similar, uh, approaching it in a similar way to slavery, where we had this in our founding, but we realized that this is not something that we want to have in our society anymore. Is that kind of how you see how the way government should work here in America? Is yeah, that definitely. I think, you know, a lot of things, uh, you know, written, if something's written in 1776, there's obviously going to be changes that happen over, you know, 250 years or as the country goes up and, you know, there's new technology and new things that just come about over that time. So I think definitely taking a look at, um, well, sort of, a legislation from a very long time ago and seeing can we update this? Is it possible that we'll be able to um, we'll be able to like, make improvements, make it fit today's era, make it fit today's times? I don't think everything that was possible and that was maybe right in the 1700s or 1800s or even the 1900s is right and possible for 2018 and the future. Uh, so are you saying that America's founding, so like the founding wasn't really based on things that were best for right now, or? I mean, there's no way to predict what would have happened. Yeah, but I mean, just like, what do you think should be changed, and like, how should that change? I mean, there's a couple things that should be changed, I mean, obviously, and that have been changed over the past years as well, like all the amendments. I mean, we have an amendment-based system. When our country is being founded, the people who were in charge of founding and creating this nation decided that, oh, like we know things might happen in the future that we can't predict. So that's why the Bill of Rights and amendments that have followed all sort of ensue. And that's like a built-in system almost as like a, hey, if we need to fix or change something, we have that opportunity. Yeah, that's why it's so awesome. Yeah, that's great. That's, that is something that is good about America. Yeah. We should maybe utilize that in other aspects as well. Yeah, so, and also we have our, the way we make laws, uh, there's really no other country, well, not no other country, there's very few other countries that have like a real bicameral legislature that has two like equally powerful bodies. And that gridlock is really good because it doesn't allow really rapid change that can destroy the system or take things all out of whack. I mean, not everything our government does even now is good, but it's really good that we have this thing that is really constrained from infringing on individual, liber individual liberties, so. So in listening to you guys, one of the things that I'm kind of curious about, Grace, is like, do you think that sometimes the issue of American exceptionalism can be kind of utilized as a way to kind of ignore some problems that may be perceived in the uh, American system? Like, yeah, definitely. I think a lot of people are, I mean, obviously they're very proud to be American and they're patriotic, and I'm not saying I'm not, I'm not going like, to go home and burn a flag. Obviously, like, I am proud to be an American citizen, but like I said, I don't think that if you call your something exceptional, it doesn't mean there's room for improvement. It's 
if you apply it to even a school system, like, okay, you get a 91 in a class, that doesn't mean you're perfect. You can, you have room for improvement. You have room to strive, get an A, get an A plus to work harder and be perfect. I mean, why would you want to settle for a lower grade and just say, yeah, that's good when you could say like, oh, I want to be great. Yeah, and I agree with that and I think we should keep improving. But uh, right now, in most, if not all respects, we're just better than everyone else. And I mean, why not become even better? I totally agree with that. Um, but I disagree where it's like, we are better than everyone else right now. So that's important to acknowledge too. Um, can we like talk about foreign policy a little bit? Oh how, yeah, right. go ahead. So um, I think that America, it's a really great country to live in, but it's also a really great country for the rest of the world. There's really no other country that's done as much to propagate its blessings throughout the world because we have so much. We have our freedom and wealth that we have really uh, stepped up to uh, spread those things and ensure those things for all kinds of other countries and peoples all over the world. Um, so after World War II, Britain sort of stepped aside with its role as you know a world leader and a world power, and the U.S. was able to come and fill that role. Uh, and they knew they could kind of pass the torch to us. But really, right now, there's no other country that can do that. Like, do we really want Russia and China to be, you know, the ones who are like protecting individual liberties throughout the rest of the world and protecting the sovereignty of some other country that might be threatened by Iran. So really, uh, there's really no other country that can do what we do. So, Well, there's no other country that can do what we do. And there have been some good instances of America kind of being like that like world policeman is kind of like ensuring those personal liberties are being upheld worldwide. There comes a point when you have to realize, are we doing too much? And you have to almost think about that because there are definitely instances in the past and you know, recent years where there have been controversies, should America have gotten involved in these affairs? Is, are we butting in where we shouldn't? And I think while it's definitely, um, it's definitely positive to want to like implore Dem to like encourage other countries to like uptake our democratic ideals and uh, use democratic system. Like that's great and that's been working like pretty well for us and it's better than a totalitarian government or somewhere where there's just like one person in charge and the people don't have much say. But I think that in some cases we need to butt out a bit, let other countries figure it out for themselves and provide guidance. There have been the Middle East. I mean, there's a whole host of things we could get into about the Middle East. But I think personally, um, just a couple of affairs we probably shouldn't have gotten involved in that we did, and that may have caused repercussions that are lasting up into even today. So that have been, you know, almost a decade, over a decade ago. Yeah, and I agree that. I mean, obviously we can't step in uh, in terms of like the military with every human rights violation there is. But I'm just curious, what do you think we handled poorly? I mean, I'm personally, I don't think we should have uh, gone into the Middle East on just the assumption that there could have been WMDs. And I mean, we had, obviously in APUSH we talked about this a lot, but I think that, or my class did at least, but I think that when it was clear that there wasn't any and that the situation like wasn't as disastrous as we had once thought it was, I think that America should have pulled out quickly and sort of, obviously there would have been like still repercussions, but I don't think it would have been quite as, this, like, the scale of what we're seeing today, almost. Yeah, but so, first of all, when we went to uh, the Middle East because we thought Saddam had uh, nuclear weapons, it was because there was very good intelligence that was obviously wrong, but, I mean, nothing's ever for certain in the intelligence business. No, definitely, yeah, but, and I um, don't doubt that there was definitely the thought and the notion that there were nuclear weapons, and that, but once it was clear... It was that, pretty credible, yeah, to begin with. But yeah. also, like, once it was clear that there weren't, we were kind of in too deep, and then if we had pulled out, it would just, just been like pulling out the rug from under them. We kind of saw that happen when Obama uh, wanted to get out of Iraq and Afghanistan, and then lo and behold, there was ISIS again, which had basically been kicked out of Al-Qaeda because they were just butchers. So really when America like, takes itself out of the equation too early, it doesn't spell good things for the rest of the world and those regions that we were trying to help initially. Did we go in too deep in the first place, though? And obviously this isn't the point of the debate, but should yeah. we have pushed so much in the beginning, like had we sent in like less forces, less troops in the first place, then would we have had, would pulling out then have been such a disastrous thing if we weren't in quite as deep initially? And I personally don't think that would have been, but. but yeah. I, I don't know if Saddam was, I mean, I should know more about this. I don't know if Saddam was dead by the time we had confirmed that he didn't have them in the first place. I, do you, how do you guys well, know? Well, unfortunately yeah. we're kind of running, yeah, out, running of out of time right time. here. Yeah, yeah. So um, just to kind of end it off, can Grace, can you uh, kind of summarize like, can you just put all onto the table like your final words? What do you guys want to really impart with your um, debate today? Yeah, um, I definitely think America can be exceptional. I think that we're definitely, you know, one of the wealthier countries. I think that we're in a good place with international affairs. I think that um, 
particularly maybe under this administration. A lot of countries in the world might be looking down on us a bit, but I don't think that's a reason to give up hope. Um, there's There may be corruption in the government, but I think that if you listen to the complaints from citizens and you really take a hard look at what do the people want, because that's what our country was founded, focusing on what the majority of the people want, doing what the majority of the people want, and that's how elect officials get elected into office, and that is how real change can get made. Um, I mean, like I said, we're doing, we're doing pretty well. We're doing decent, but why would we want to settle for that? I think that America definitely can be great, and in the past we've made great strides. We abolished slavery. We had the 60s where a lot of civil rights, uh, civil rights just amendments were made and passed, and there was a big leap with that. So if we've done this in the past, then why can't we do it again and become exceptional? Greg, what are your final words on this topic? So Obama once said that he believes in American exceptionalism, kind of like the Brits believe in British exceptionalism and the Greeks believe in Greek exceptionalism. So he basically believes that there is nothing special at all about America, and that is completely wrong. America is the greatest country in the world. It always has been and always will be. It doesn't mean that we can use that as an excuse to rest on our laurels and you know, just get complacent with ourselves. But there's no one who is better for the world and better for its people than America because of the rights we have and the peace and stability that we provide for the rest of the world. So. Well, hey, thank you guys both for joining us today on this episode of Point Counterpoint, uh, Point Counterpoint. Um, be sure to check out both of uh, Grace's and Greg's uh, articles in the Lion newspaper coming out uh, October, 25th. October 25th. So be sure to pick that up or visit it at the Lion newspaper's website, lionnewspaper.com. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thanks, Lars. Thank you.